Hello, and thank you for joining us. I'm Tesha Hummer, Strategic Communications Manager for Vitalant, and joining me today is Chief Medical and Scientific Officer, Dr. Ralph Asalo. We're going to offer you a behind the scenes perspective about blood donation. Every day, thousands of patients rely on blood, platelets, and plasma donations as part of a solution to life-threatening situations they face. Blood donors are vital to ensuring these patients' needs are met, and new donors are needed to keep a healthy blood supply constantly needed by patients. That need is especially great as Vitalant currently faces a critical blood and platelet shortage and needs healthy donors to come forward and replenish the blood supply. Many people believe that blood is mostly needed after major, major disasters. However, daily personal emergencies and ongoing medical needs of thousands of patients require a constant and ready blood supply. It's the blood on the shelves that saves lives. Dr. Vasala, we often hear about the need for blood, especially as we face a critical blood shortage. What are some of the ways blood donations are used to support daily patient needs? Well, donations support hospitalized patients undergoing cancer treatments or with medical bleeding conditions, surgical and trauma patients, people who need chronic transfusions like those with sickle cell anemia, and pregnant women, babies, and children. Every day in the US, patients in hospitals, surgical centers, and outpatient settings need 29,000 units of red cells, 5,000 units of platelets, and 6,500 units of plasma. Thank you. And uh, what is your most memorable patient situation where donated blood saved that patient's life? Well, a lot of patients. As a hematologist, oncologist, many of the treatments my patients needed wouldn't have been possible without the support of generous blood donors. Marrow transplants, modern miracles we take for granted, curative in many cases, require an average of 12 units of red cells and platelet transfusions every few days for three to six weeks. I have personally observed the power of blood donations. Thank you. What are some of the considerations hospitals may need to make when facing a critical blood shortage? You know, we all have a responsibility to help ensure that blood's available whenever and wherever it's needed. While Vitalant prioritizes local hospital needs first, we also provide blood throughout the country, moving it wherever there's a need. There's always the chance, though, that physicians could postpone an elective surgery if needed blood can't be guaranteed. And even worse, they may be unable to perform urgent procedures like an organ transplant because of a blood shortage. In the very worst cases, rationing may require tolerating lower blood counts. Nobody wants to see that, and it takes a partnership between the blood center and the community to avoid that, something we take very, very seriously. And Dr. Vasala, we often hear about the importance of type O blood. Why is this blood type especially needed? Yeah, sure. O negative folks are considered universal red cell donors because in an emergency, when there's no time to determine the patient's blood type, hospitals reach first for O negative blood. Now, only 7% of the population is O-negative, but hospitals transfuse O-negative blood 10 to 20% of the time. O-positive red cells can be transfused to people with any blood type as long as they're among the 85% that are Rh-positive, and even then in an emergency, O-positive can still be used for Rh-negative patients. Almost 40% of the population is O-positive, but hospitals still require a disproportionate percentage of O-positive blood. You can see why this is such an important blood type in the United States. Definitely, thank you so much. And I know people hear so much about the importance of O to, uh, type O, O negative, no positive, but all blood types can play a role, especially through powering up. Uh, can you tell us more about how donors can uh, power up and maximize their impact for patients? Yeah, that's so true. Patients uh, require individualized care and people with every blood type can, very, can play a very special role in helping them. Platelets, half to two-thirds of which are used in cancer treatment, also help people with chronic blood disorders and those undergoing open-heart surgery and organ transplants. With a five to seven-day shelf life, after testing, platelets are generally on hospital shelves for only four days. Red cells are vital for the wide variety of patients we mentioned before, and people with type O blood or who are Rh negative, because A and B negative units are often in short supply, they can donate two units of red cells using a small, a small portable collection device to maximize their gift. Now, the third component, plasma, helps patients experiencing massive blood loss, childbirth complications, or have severe burns. And interestingly, in this circumstance, AB donors are the universal plasma donor because they don't have antibodies that would, that would uh, attack 
the A or B substance on, on people's red blood cells. So critically important, everyone plays a role in helping patients. Thank you so much. And with your unique role in supporting patients needing transfusions, uh, if you could lend one piece of advice, uh, or excuse me, one piece of perspective about the importance of donating, what would it be? I'll give you a couple, actually. Sadly, 63% of Americans are eligible to donate, but less than 5% do so in any given year. And interestingly, less than half of us ever donate once in our lives. But at some point, half of us will personally need a transfusion. And virtually everyone listening today has at least one loved one or close friend whose life has been saved by a transfusion. So I would ask that people make blood donation a habit and not wait for an emergency because it takes two to three days to get blood on hospital shelves. They should talk to friends and family about blood donation and share stories of how transfusions have helped people that they know. Thank you so much, Dr. Vassallo. And uh, on a little bit of a lighter note, what is the best or worst blood donation joke you've heard? Well, uh, the cultural icon Fonzie from Happy Days, what blood type does he have? Hey, <laughs> he always worries when he has to take a blood test, but he always gets an A+. Plus. <laughs> Love okay. it. I know. Stick to medicine, exactly. <laughs> no, it's all good. I get tons of fun one on social. So, so we'll see if some cool ones come in the comments too. Wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us and taking the time to share your valuable insight, Dr. Vassallo. Uh, as Dr. Vassallo mentioned today, not enough people regularly give blood to prevent blood shortages. In fact, only about 3% of the U.S. population gives blood, despite most being eligible, as you said. In the last year, Vitalant saw a 12% decrease in first-time donors, and new donors are especially needed now to avert a long-term summer shortage. We invite you to help us fight this critical blood shortage by scheduling your next donation in the days and weeks ahead at Vitalant.org, messaging our page to connect with a scheduling specialist, or call us at 877-25-VITAL. Most importantly, we ask you to make this more than just a one-time act of service. As Dr. Vassallo emphasized, blood donors are needed every day to ensure patients have the blood they need when they need it. By committing to donating regularly, you can help fight blood shortages like we're experiencing today. If you're unable to give, you can still help by encouraging friends or family members to donate, signing up to host a blood drive for your organization or community group, or by finding volunteer opportunities near you. Head to Vitalant.org for more details. Please act now to help give someone a solution to a life-threatening situation they face. Whether it's red blood cells to stabilize accident victims, platelets to sustain cancer patients, or plasma to support those who've been seriously burned. Because of you, life doesn't stop. Thank you.